Welcome, bonjour, and bienvenidos to the First Half Podcast. This weekly show is about all things footy and the way we see it on this side of the pond. In our episode, we will try and cover as many topics as we can that fall into the categories of art, culture, music, fashion, food, drink, and the game itself, and anything in its sports ecosystem. You can follow us and tell us if we rock, suck, and make suggestions on all our social medias. It's all of them, the First Half Podcast. This show is powered by Luxy Media. Check them out at luxymedia.com and see what they can do for your business. Now for the show. Welcome to the First Half Podcast. On today's episode, we have a gentleman named Sean McMahon. He is the voice of Montreal as far as I'm concerned when you hear it. You'll understand what I mean. He's done a lot of things. He's even worked with the local club and has been a sports reporter for over, I think, 20 years. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please share, follow, make any comments, DM me, send me messages, tell me you hate it, tell me you love it. Either way, let us know what you think. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the First Half Podcast with Sean McMahon. Doesn't matter. It doesn't this is matter. still the, the best soccer in this the world. This is about growing the sport in this city, in this country, uh, for that yeah. matter. And, and I remember back in 2006, I was on a broadcast team that had the FIFA World Cup, the one that Italy won. And I was on the air for 29 out of 30 days. <laughs> I knew you'd be excited about that. I was on the air for 29 out of 30 days, and I was blown away every single day by the love that this city had for the beautiful game. It was amazing. Yeah. And then you fast forward 20 years from just that moment to 2026, and you take into account the teenage players now who are going to be in their 20s. And they'll have a deep-rooted love for the game. They'll have some disposable income to attend an event like that. The existing fans. An impact team that's always been there that's now going to be well into their MLS history. Maybe a cup or two under their belt. In 2026, you add World Cup to that. If that doesn't galvanize the love of soccer in this city, like, I don't know what will. Welcome to the First Half Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, somebody that's been supporting Goal Initiatives for quite some time, a Montreal staple, Sean McMahon. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. This guy's a TV guy, radio guy. I like your description on social media. I like the way you say it with guy. I thought it was very classy. Um, Thank you for joining us today, Sean, on the First Half Podcast. It's a real pleasure. it's also an honor because I'm in your space when it comes to this. And so uh, it's fun to have, uh, have you with us. So welcome. Well, listen, uh, I appreciate uh, you having me on. I love the podcast and, and you're doing a great job in that space. I really enjoy listening and watching, uh, you know, every time you get a new episode out there. So uh, yeah, kudos to you. It's been fun. It's been fun so far. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, man. So listen, um, the show we is listened to in a few locations around the world. We're super fortunate. So don't think it's just about Montreal. So when you're describing things, please you know, open up and talk about it. Uh, just be very descriptive. Um, so listen, Sean, like, l- let's get right to it. Um, you're on the show. Please tell our listeners, uh, you know, your name, what you're up to, what you're doing, and a little bit of your backstory. Well, it's a loaded question. There's a lot going on these days, uh, you know, at a time when there's not a lot going on, which is kind of interesting, right? So, um, you know, I... I- I guess we'll start from the beginning. I mean, I'm just a regular guy, like I said. Uh, you know, I, I, it all started on a cold winter's night back in November of 1981. <laughs> you know? Amazing. Yeah. Growing up on the mean streets of Ahuntsic. But uh, that's, that's kind of, I feel like I had like the typical Canadian upbringing. You know, I, I grew up in Ahuntsic and spent all my time as a kid just being outside, playing soccer, playing football, playing hockey, playing baseball. You know, it was you get out, first light. And when the lights came on, street lamps came on, you knew it was time to come in. And, you know, I grew up in a, a super multicultural neighborhood. Um, my mom's Italian. My dad's of Irish descent. We were all Italian and Portuguese and everybody just got along. It was rows and rows of duplexes. And, and that's all we cared about was just being together and playing sports and playing music and, and hanging out and being around family and um, just kind of went through school and, and still going through life like that, really, to be honest with you. And now just uh, working away, working away. It's, it's, it's a busy time on the job front, but, uh, but good times, definitely. So what exactly, um, what do you do right now? What is your, if someone were to say, hey, Sean, uh, or Mr. McMahon, what, it, what, what is it that you do? How would you describe yourself? Yeah, well, Mr. McMahon's my dad, so let's get that clear <laughs> right I, I, away. I, you know what? I just, I just like, <laughs> I like saying your name because of the Thank age. you. I'm telling you, yeah, man. It's, like, it's, it's a tough name. You get me, right? I mean, it's a tough name. Yeah, I know. That's, that's exactly right. Like, day by day, you like, look at it, and people are like, hey, ballets, <laughs> the blah, blah, Like, nobody knows what you're to like, do. So, for me... There's no there's no Q in there. Why are people no, pronouncing like, a Q in my name? <laughs> <sorry. laughs> yeah, so what's your backstory? Like, what are you doing? So, right now, uh, I, I'm actually in a new role. Uh, as of the last... Uh, that's about nine months or so now. 
I'm uh, the communications specialist for the Jewish General Hospital. So depending on where you're listening, you know, at the moment, it's, you know, the number one hospital in, in Quebec. It's, you know, number four or five, typically in Canada, one of the best in the world. And I'm just, as you can imagine, working at a hospital during a pandemic, it's been, um, it's been eye-opening, let me tell you. I mean, we can dig into that or not dig into that, but it's been, it's been really, really tough, uh, but very gratifying at the same time. So that's, that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, that's my day job. My, my night job, weekend job after the kids go to bed job is I'm a voiceover artist. I've been doing that for close to 20 years now uh, from this, this home studio that I have right behind me here. And is that really a home studio? Yeah, this is my home studio. So wow, I've got, uh, looks got pro, this built man. out. Thank you very much. It's been, uh, it's been really great, to be honest with you. And it's, uh, it's nice to be able to do projects for people at a moment's notice, uh, TV, radio, instructional stuff. Really, it's, um, it's been a blessing. And I'm c- coming off of about 19 years of pro radio as a reporter, host, producer, uh, doing about half of that in AM radio as a sports reporter, journalist, editor, and the back half of it as a music guy uh, doing, doing music shows for, for about a decade or so. My so yeah, gosh. that's that's where we're at. Yeah, and, and it's amazing. It actually seems to beautifully intermix and sort of you know intersect with each other. Were you always sure this was something you were going to do? Oh, uh, from yeah, from real early on. Uh, I like to talk, <laughs> so you know that's that's the one thing I always I always liked being around people. Number one, um, and and telling stories, and I always felt like I had a message, and to be able to craft that in different ways, I always found that to be very exciting. So um, I'd say. I'd say I always liked performing for a little while there. I thought about, you know, taking up theater and stuff like that and then made some decisions in my life. But around 14, 15, I was, I was quite academically inclined in, in high school, especially. And I really enjoyed um, public speaking. I loved competing and did a lot of public speaking and debate club and things like that. And by 14, 15, I knew that I wanted to be on, on the radio and just did everything that I could as a teenager to align myself, to get to a point where that would be a reality. And then by the age of 18, I was lucky enough to be working in pro radio, which is, you know, my one company for almost two decades doing radio in your hometown, in your backyard. I just uh, feel so blessed. Amazing. What the, uh, while you were doing the sports stuff is, tell us a little bit where, where football got, where you and football, I mean, you said growing up, you played it and uh, the, the backgrounds of your parents, was there any factor there to where football sort of came you know, like was football any more prominent than hockey was? And I'm using that as obviously a very Canadian reference, but no, sure, uh, but it, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I mean it's funny because up until up until '93, when when the Canadians won the Stanley Cup, I mean it was all hockey all the time for me growing up. That was, you know, my entourage, my friends, we were just so into hockey. Uh, you know, '94, uh, Roberto Baggio uh, broke my heart. Uh, <laughs> you know, the Italian national football team is, oh boy, that's that's right there uh, for me, and I, I think that was the start of a love affair. And as I got into my teen years, a lot of the people I were hanging out with were from, you know, that particular cultural background and others who were so into uh, football, soccer, you know, Portuguese friends, Greek friends, and that European influence really started to permeate into like my day to day. I got to know more about this. I want to know about the players. I want to watch more games and all these wonderful moments and memories that keep coming back to me about going to cafes, you know, between the age of whatever to whatever to watch World Cup and Euro and it was, it was about the sport, but it was about, it was about the gathering. You know what I mean? It was, it was so culturally satisfying to just be around people who loved what you were watching, but the game was almost a byproduct of just being able to hang out and, and just be with each other with a common interest and just spend time and realize that that time it was, was more important than anything else. You know, then 98 came along and, uh, you know, the, the love affair grew. And then I started working in sports. Uh, at a station called 940 News, which is no longer uh, around anymore, unfortunately. But that was probably the pivotal moment because in 2006, uh, we were lucky enough to be the only uh, Canadian broadcasters to have the FIFA World Cup. So uh-huh. I did a full month of coverage uh, on the radio with a broadcast team. And that's when I really, I mean, you can't get closer to it than that. Uh, and as a fan, I was just, I mean, talk about getting your kicks, right? So I was watching it as a fan. And the fact that I was an Italy fan and the whole tournament culminated in Italy winning the World Cup, it was, I mean, as of then, that was it for so me. So basically your, your, your non-biased sort of uh, sports reporting went out the window. I do. Well, I mean, in those moments, I'm, I'm not going to say I ran laps in up and down the hallway screaming and cheering. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was, um, there was a moment there where I probably uh, took the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the objectivity and threw it out the window. That was a pretty exciting time. Um, what an amazing, it was fun to watch. What an amazing connect and connection to 
to to the love of the love of the game and it really you know what uh or the love of the sport and the love of the culture that comes around it. and what you just said uh exactly is the tone you you nailed it this is this is what the first half's all about and this is actually uh what i am desperately hoping will be coming across in all these episodes and as we intersect with different people and speak with the boys and girls from around the world and locally uh, that are in love with the game and really in love with the game and understand that when I say in love with the game, I mean the ecosystem that's around it because the honest truth is, you know, the 90 minutes for me um, is probably the smallest part. It is the most heart attack inducing. It is the most, oh, yeah. um, you know, like this week I had a disaster, you know, I, I, last week and a half, I, it's just gone up and down for me because of my my club in England, but it's just, that's not the point. The point is being, it's really about everything else, right? Uh, and then that lead up to that weekend match, or I mean, in, in this particular case, we're playing football now 24 hours a day, every day of the week. But you know what I mean? Like it's the, it's the lead up, it's the friends, it's the fans, it's the blogs, it's the newspapers, it's the, the music, the fashion, it's everything that goes around it. And it's what you just well, said, going to a cafe. I, I, everything you just said, I couldn't agree with you more. And I actually really, in some strange way i think i prefer the build up to the game more than the game itself on most days you know i think it's funny that you know we bring up 2006 because from an international perspective that's where my love affair for for football became very evident it was also the year that i started working for the montreal impact while i was also doing radio so i started working for a pro football club while my love affair for football was at an all-time high and i've all especially since then but i've always loved that 90 minutes two hours you know when the stadium is still empty yeah or when you just arrive as a fan and it's quiet and the pitch is quiet and that general, that, that gradual like lead up to kickoff, there's something that's so magical about that, that if you're alone or with somebody that you care about or friends, that buildup is, you can't describe that. It's people who don't follow soccer or they've never been to a live match. I don't think they'll ever fully understand that, that moment, those moments leading up to it, nothing like it. Until nothing like it. Actually come to a live match is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, hopefully, and then, we'll no, get but some then live, hopefully uh, that sort of pushes them over the edge. Like I remember the first time that I went to a, a, my first real match in Europe, um, and what I mean by a real match is like you know, like I'm sorry, but around the world, I mean North America, it'll take some time just because it'll take some time. But when you mm -hmm. you go to a game in Europe, uh, and I'm going to specifically single out in in England, um, and it's literally 24 hours before kickoff oh, yeah. and it's 24 hours of this is what we're thinking about talking, doing, eating, living, breathing the streets. Nobody's, there's no cars. It's all every, the police are on horseback. Wow. Everybody. That's awesome. The, 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 the illegal merchants selling gear, the like, no, it's just, <laughs> dude, it's, it's so goddamn cool, you know? And it's, I remember that first time I was just like, what the hell? Like I'm trying to soak it in, but you need, it sounds ridiculous, but you got to go many times to understand what you're... It's like, it's like if you go see your favorite... I remember going to see my favorite film. I mm -hmm. would want to watch my favorite films like 10, 15 times so I could capture everything in it. Because the first so time, cool. you're so just like, oh my God. And then it takes every time you watch it to be able to catch the other elements, right? And so um, that to me is football, man. And, and that's... I'm trying to relate to what you're just saying of that that energy that you get when you're in, you know, when you're in the field, when you're in a stadium, when you're, you know, kickoffs about to happen. Cause you're right, man. Like the, once you've got the 90 plus going on, it's the game. Like it's, there's too many, there's too many players. What I mean by that, like there's just too many factors why it can just go any, it can go so many different directions. Right. Mm -hmm. The theater. Hey, of what's, it. It, what's interesting though. And, and first of all, I mean, going to Europe to watch a, a matches. I mean, that's, that's on my bucket list. That's something I've yet to do. I've been in visiting stadiums, but not in Europe. Um, I've been on the field at TFC and that's an experience in and of itself when you're not on the right side, <laughs> when you're not at the right side of things, people like to like to say some nasty stuff to you <laughs> when you're wearing the wrong Jersey, <laughs> but, but no, you're right. And it's, it's funny because it's almost, it's almost directly proportionate. Like there's a parallel between the lead up to the game and the actual game itself in that people who say, and love to say, and my favorite thing is people say, well, soccer is boring. No. Soccer is not, not boring. It's you're 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 waiting that anticipation that build up for something to finally happen that penultimate that penultimate moment for the goal if there is one 
that's what you live and breathe for when you're a football fan. That moment before the match, nothing's happened yet, so everything is possible. Right. And that's the part that I just, I absolutely love. And there's, right. there's and, moments and, there. Yeah, no, and absolutely. And then the adulation, the excitement, or the deflation mm-hmm. on either side after is so heavy, right? Like, it's just so amazing to see how everybody starts off at the, with the same excitement. And literally 90 yep. minutes, 90 minutes plus later, you know, half of that stadium is walking out with their, you know, like uh, the flame. Yeah, right? well, there's always, at least, at least there's always next week. There's always next week. <laughs> you know, that's the right. way you got to look at yeah, it. Right. But, but that's exactly it. There's always next week. So you get over it. And by the next part of the day of the next day, you're already getting juiced up for the next one. Yeah, exactly. And the yeah. momentum starts ramping again. up again. Right. It's great. There's nothing, there's nothing like it. And you're right. I mean, I always tell the friends of mine who are diehard hockey fans to use that classic Canadian reference. And they say, ah, it's not, it's not the same. You know, I don't need, I don't, I don't need the manufactured entertainment of a hockey game. Not there's anything wrong with it. And I'm a huge hockey fan too. Yeah. But I tell people, you gotta go, you gotta go see it live. It's a chess match and it's beautiful. There's poetry to it that if you, you know, if you finally go and really try to appreciate it for what it is, yeah. uh, you're hooked forever. I totally agree. It, it, once you get bit, it, it it gets better and better, and it becomes more and more of an addiction, right? Mm-hmm, um, absolutely. This is actually a good segue then into my my one of my questions here on the first half podcast, and it's one I try and ask uh, many people. Um, is and again, we are in a time and moment, you know, where things are a little bit odd for everybody, and you know, uh, we're all going through quite a lot of things. Um, but the question I have is. On the football side and North America, does it have a chance of winning over those hockey friends of yours and others that you just mentioned that find that football is boring? Um, can it make itself into, uh, can it really work itself into the media and really be around? Now, if you understand what I mean by that, I know you'll get it. it I'm not talking about the local sports radio or sports mm-hmm. radio or uh, like in TSN or an ESPN or, uh, you know, I'm talking about major information on football that's always around in your face so that you become, it, be, it climatizes to you around. It's not just a little blurb or one game is mentioned as a highlight versus the other 20 games that happened that day, right? Yeah. Can that happen? Will North Americans uh, take to it, like really take to it? Uh, the way they have in the rest of the world. So that's a loaded question, right? I mean, there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, and there is, by the way, just before you get into this, there's no right answer. This is just straight up, I I want your opinion. So my opinion is I think it can get there. It's where I have a bit of an issue is I'm not sure we can ever fully, I don't think we can make the comparison in other parts of the world because I don't know if it'll ever get there. And the reason why I say that is... I mean, it's a, it's a generational thing. That, this is the thing with football. It takes generations of fans, myself, my son, his son, that history. You know, there's a reason why the Montreal Canadiens with over 100 years of history, it's because you've been hearing about it from your grandfather, then your dad, and then you go, and now you're taking your kids. You know, I got a seven-year-old son upstairs, and I got a four-year-old daughter upstairs. I'm going to take them to a hockey game, and I'm going to tell them all about it, but I'm also doing that with soccer. So I'll take them to impact games. And I'll explain those things. But that takes a while. You know, it's like, it's like turning a cruise ship. It's going to turn. It just, it takes a while. And, you know, until repetition is key in this, and you hit the nail on the head, until we become inundated with it, and it becomes part of that everyday conversation, which it's not quite there yet, that's, that's the gauge for me. That's the barometer for success in terms of how, how much of a corner we've turned as North Americans will call it, you know? I actually think there's a really great soccer culture in Canada. You know, there's a terrific soccer culture in Montreal and Quebec. You know, in, a, in Montreal especially, a very multicultural uh, city with lots of people from different backgrounds. Some people thumb their nose at it a little bit and saying, well, it's not like back home, but their kids, it's a different story. They're starting to play. They've been playing for a long time. They get into their teen years, they become adults, and they end up bringing their kids one point. But that takes a long time. So yes, I think it can get there to answer the question. I'm not sure uh, how long it's going to take to get there, but as long as we keep talking about it. And from the media perspective, I think it's really important. It's incumbent. And I say this to somebody with 20 years of media in me. I think it's incumbent on media members who follow these types of things to take an interest in it and to be educated about it and not just be lazy 
about not what's just easiest make it to your, cover. That's not your assignment, right? It's not just, okay, I, I got to take care of that. Or this is the season. You're the guy that, or the girl that's taking care of, uh, of, of, of football, uh, soccer this season. Like that, that's bullshit. Excuse my language. And, and that way it doesn't go anywhere. That, I mean, that's listen, where it gets blocked. You can't force people to like something. And I think no. we'd be foolish to try. And, and I'm fine. You know, I completely appreciate somebody who says, look, I tried. I don't like it. It's those who say I've never tried or I haven't watched and I don't like it. That's where I start having an issue with that. And that's whether it's the media, fans, you name it. Give it a try. Get into it. Try to learn some of the nuances of it because it's the nuances of everything, not just sports. The nuances of life make things interesting. If you start to look at the little details of things, that's what gets you. That's what hooks you. That's what makes you want to go back for more. You know, the nuances. The reason why I play golf is because I'm terrible at it. <laughs> and there's little nuances that I keep trying to perfect. And that's what makes me go back the next time because I think right. I'm going to be better and I'll know more about it. S same thing for sports, but it's going to take time. You know, and I think, I think as, as the younger generation, they've maybe grown more accustomed to, I mean, you just have to look at the numbers, right? How many kids are playing hockey versus how many kids used to play baseball versus how many kids are playing football, uh, soccer, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but, but you know that there are more Canadian boys and girls right now playing soccer than any other sport. The and it's a more accessible sport. And it's a more accessible sport. And that's Absolutely exactly my more point. Accessible. And as immigration and in Canada continues mm -hmm. to rise, so will football. Because mm -hmm. the rest of the world are playing football or they're playing cricket and rugby. Like I, but this is a good thing. This Again, is a good thing. You know, like, it's like something that I wrote down uh, for something uh, that hopefully comes out soon enough. Um, uh, Alfonso Davies, right? Like, again, I don't want to try and date the show because I always hope that when people listen, they might listen. Whenever this, you know, whenever you hear this show, you might be down and that the subject matter is still relatively relevant. But the Bundesliga just ended. This guy, you know, top rookie. Fuck. Do you know how cool this is? That this guy is an immigrant to Canada. He's a Canadian. He's a Canadian. But you know what I mean? Like the story is immigrates story is to amazing. Canada. He plays for Team Canada. Plays with an, a, a Canadian MLS club. Goes over to Europe. Europe. Goes to Germany. Goes to Byron Munich. Like you're top the, of the best like, team in Germany. <laughs> the best team in Germany. Even though Chelsea beat them. That's right. Champions League. Beautiful. <laughs> there goes uh, that bias. We're going to get, yeah, meanwhile, we're going to get our asses smacked in this little mini <laughs> Champions League tournament, but we're not going to talk about that because this will come out after that fact. Uh, but, um, and here he is, a kid. He's a kid. Just smoking everybody. That is what you need to continue seeing. And that is all based on immigration to Canada and other young boys and girls in Canada. What, I mean, the women's Canadian national team are gangsters. They're gangsters. Phenomenal. Yeah, our, our men's national team is a disaster. And eventually it will get there. But my, my point being is, like, sorry, not my point. I just want to sort of tack on to what we've just talked about. We are, it's a time thing. It's a, and I think if it just keeps going, and we keep having, like you said, these conversations and the media on any side is into it and the around the water cooler people are talking about it. And then we have the actual athletes stepping up because that's the other thing, right? Like you, you still got to have these boys and girls, you know, kicking ass on an international level uh, locally, obviously as well. But, you know, that's how it is. It's like that old story. The DJ has to go out of town to make it big back in his town or her town. You know what I mean? Like they got to come back because they were big somewhere else. Then they're like, oh, that's oh, our yeah. guy and our girl. Come back. We love you. You know, that kind of thing. Well, that's, look, that's the classic radio narrative. A lot of people think that, you know, if you want to work in radio, you know, in big city radio, as they call it, you got to go work in, you know, Dauphin, Manitoba, with all due respect, if you're listening in Dauphin, Manitoba. But that kind of thing where, and then you can come back home at some point. You're right about that. It is a time thing. I think it's a kid thing too. You know, it, it sounds cliche. Kids are the future, but kids are the future. They're playing in huge numbers. And that's all they're going to know for years and years and years. And the other important element to that, in my opinion, anyway, Paul, is like you said, at the club level, especially if you're in a market where there is a club, a pro club in many cases, in our case, you know, in our city, we're, we're where we have an MLS club. It wasn't always an MLS club. It was an, a USL club. It started super grassroots and it became the team that we know that they are today. Kids in our market that are playing and they're eight and nine and 14 years old the fact that they can aspire to that and that they're seeing they're represented there's 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 
Quebecers on that team. There's people from our very own backyard playing at the pro level in our backyard. Those kids now can aspire to be that. That is the continuation that makes all the difference because they could play and then, you know, and then, you know, 14 year old boy says, you know what, the heck with this, I'm interested in girls and forget soccer (laughs) for the rest of my life. But there's those that are going to say, you know what, look at so-and-so who made it. And they're right here in my backyard. That's going to keep them. If, if, I mean, if nothing else, that'll keep them hooked onto it. And you know what I'm going to throw out and I, and I've said this before and I'm going to keep throwing it out little bits. I'm going to keep sprinkling it. I think we need a women's MLS club. And I think the MLS needs to do what they're doing in Europe and make a league straight up. I listen, think the whole this female is absolute side of nonsense that it is. That's not happening. It, it's, it's no, listen. That, and it's just, even, even if you're just into marketing, if no disrespect, like, are you fucking crazy? Of course. The women's game is stronger than the men's game nationally in North America. So what are you talking about? Let's go. Like, take the model. The problem is, though, that model that model's flawed, though, Paul. And I'll tell you why. Because at the end of the day, dollars and cents will end up ruling out. Yes. I and you brought up the women's national team. And I'm just for the record, I want this to be clear. We're recording this, right? Uh, yep. I'm with you on this. I love the women's game. I, for, I mean, I would go watch. There would be no issue for me. But a lot of people have these preconceived notions that yep. it's an inferior product. And insert sport here. Yep. doesn't matter. Football, hockey, yeah, you name yeah, it. it. It's yeah. an inferior product. They're inferior athletes, which is bullshit. Forgive me. Yeah. Uh, but look at Christine Sinclair. Christine Sinclair is one of the greatest athletes in world football ever, if not the best. And we don't even, we barely talk about her in Canada. I know that's, that signals to I, me that we still have I, a huge problem. I don't totally that's, that's an issue. And so it might take what? a little listen, bit longer. So listen, we will, we will jump into that. First of all, Sean, this has been fantastic. I really, I'm enjoying this and, um, Same here. Uh, I, I, I appreciate it, especially letting me uh, have this kind of conversation with you, considering, you know, the pedigree and the time that you've been in, in, in your business. And, and oh, it's a pleasure. That's super cool. Um, I want to get to um, 12 questions with you. So something we'll we oh, do love, here on. Love uh, this is, questions. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> amazing. So look, it's a rapid fire. Okay. We go, we ask 12 questions. There's no right. There's no wrong answer. Just, just say what comes to mind. Oh, man. Should I stretch? I feel like I should stretch. I always <laughs> stretch. I always like. <laughs> oh no! Okay. We're getting close to forty here, Paul. I got to be careful what I do. Uh, I, you know, I make noise when I tie my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so after thirty-five, I don't know what happens. You may. You, I don't sleep right. Who doesn't sleep right? What does that even mean? You know exactly what that means, but this is not that kind of show. We're not it's not that show. That. It's for okay. another day. Here we go. Twelve questions on the first half podcast with Sean McMahon. Question one, sir. What is your favorite sport? Football Cl- runner up though tennis huge tennis fan but I love yeah, I'm a tennis fan too oh, I love we'll get into it, this after we'll talk it. about it after okay. but there's uh Joker's my man and Same here. during this pandemic he was doing a lot of these like really cool IGTV things about like he is he is a smart m- mother ff like this guy really smart I mean a little Super stupid smart. about Super partying he wow. shouldn't have been partying but we all make mistakes. Number two, <laughs> what song or band would you want blasting as you walked into a stadium? Oh, man. Enter Sandman Metallica. Favorite footy or sports team? Uh, the Montreal Impact, near and dear to my heart. You're, dude, you're, you're good. I knew you were going to – it's that or the Habs. Favorite athlete, dead or alive? Patrick Roy. Favorite breakfast item? Bacon. Is that a question? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> There's no, that's the only right answer. <laughs> uh, favorite drink, alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Like either or which ones are the ones you like? Oh, man. I like, I like a good Coke, but in a glass bottle. You know what I mean? Like on a hot summer day. Mm. Yeah, hilarious. <laughs> and, uh, and alcoholic? Alcoholic. I like, I like a good Grey Goose with a, with a good dash of lime in it. Nice. Straight up. I like it. Straight up. Uh, tea or coffee? Coffee and way too much of it. <laughs> you can never have too much coffee. Dream trip. I don't trip. know. I'm, I'm <laughs> no, no. Dream you trip. You can never have too many. Yeah. Dream trip. Oh, dream trip. Man, I, can it involve a sports moment? A dream trip. Anything you want. Italian, Italian national team in Italy. 
Like being at an Italian national being team at a game, Italy? being okay. at a being at an Italian national like fixture in, in Italy, competitive or not, I don't care. But that would be that would be the dream. I don't well, care will where Italy it have. Will Italy have one of the? Is Italy hosting one of the Euro cities next year? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Right, because the Euros next year, like they were supposed to be this year, are spread out all over Europe. Yeah, not uh, like I'm going to have the money to go, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. True. <laughs> Favorite condiment. Um, ooh, barbecue sauce. Pajamas or no pajamas? No pajamas. Favorite social account, something that you're watching or following right now you'd like the listeners to check out? Uh, of my own, you mean? Yeah, is there something that or you're following anybody right now? No, is there somebody? Yeah, not of your own. Like, is there something that you like that you're following? You're like, oh, people should check this guy or girl out. It's a good site. Well, the first half podcast is the first thing that comes to mind. Everybody well, should be following the first half. Well See? Done, sir. That's not bad. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. You're we'll a professional. You're a professional. <laughs> That's right. We'll leave it at that and check out my website. <laughs> All right. Perfect. What's your uh, superstition? Oh, that's that. Oh, that's an interesting one. I uh, I only put on sports equipment starting with the right, and then go to the left, no matter what. I've been mm -hmm. doing that since like as long as I can remember. Amazing. Call it so And last question. Call it soccer or football. Football football it's Amazing. gotta be football sean yeah. mcmahon and thank you so so much for your time today we really appreciate having you on the first half podcast i hope that you'll be uh you'll be down to come back on and talk a little uh, further maybe into the year when the season sort of kicks back up uh and you know we're about to come into the euros and then the world cup and the mls and the premier league and the, i mean there's a lot gonna happen over the next couple of months so i hope you'll come back and talk with us and um i really appreciate your time today Oh, uh, listen, I'm the one who appreciates it. And I'd be honored to come back. This has been uh, a ton of fun. So continued success with the podcast. It's fantastic. And uh, thanks for having me today. Really appreciate it. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, everybody, for listening to today's episode. Please follow, share, and like anything that you've heard today or in the past. Check us out and follow us on our website, thefirsthalf.com. YouTube, Pinterest, and Instagram are the same handles, The First Half. Please check us out on Facebook.com on The First Half Podcast. And on Twitter.com, it's The First Half underscore. 